What's up guys? Grim here. If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video, then you are entered into the giveaway of a Rex, which I'm giving away five of them, so we will have five different winners. And if you're somebody that used my referral link in the description below my videos, then you will win five of them yourself if you are one of the winners. And the winners are... Bam! Right there. Congratulations, enjoy your Rex. We will be sending it to you in the mail just shortly. Now I said I was gonna be making an announcement this weekend as to what the donation goals are and everything that we're gonna be doing with that and they are as follows. If you are one of the generous people that have given donations to this channel in support, then you're the reason why we're doing this. So, Next time somebody gives a donation of at least $10, I will do a Rex giveaway. If someone makes a donation of $25, I will do a Typhoon Edition giveaway of the new expansion. If we get a $50 donation, then I will give away two 30-day patron passes in Rift. If someone is generous enough to give $100, I will message you every time I'm doing Warfronts and see if you'd like to join me. I also said that we would have ultimate goals to reach and the first goal is going to be for $250 and if we reach this goal then I will make an entire video dressed up as a female. Yes that means in a dress, makeup on, hair done, everything and I will proceed to do war fronts and crush my enemies. If you guys would like to see me make a complete fool of myself, then be sure to support the channel and let's have a lot of fun. What's up guys, today we're going to go over a Reaver build that is meant to make you survive a little bit better, which has been the big problem with Warriors lately is they have not had much for survivability and Reaver is just so strong so now it's become a primary spec even whenever going into like a tanky spec or a healer spec. So you guys are going to see a variation that I came up with. There's actually two different variations of this build that I've been running around with and having a lot of success with and I'd like to share them with you guys. Now let's jump right into this here. Now if you'd like to see this build on a web page and not have to pause the video or squint at your screen then please refer to the description below this video and I will have a link to the build in there so you can click on it and look at it at your own convenience. Now as you see we went 54 points into Reaver and the areas we did not put points into is Deadly Reach, Rancid Cleave, and power leech so don't put any points into those three things now as far as paladin we went five points into a good defense five points into vengeful wrath three points into hardened defenses one point into shield of the hero one point into lights hammer five points into enduring one point into touch of life and one point into resolution and we did not put any points into Void Knight because you get the defensive ability of Void without having to put points into it. Now the masteries we went with is the level 61 Dying Breath, level 62 Steadfast Soul, level 63 Runner's Training, level 64 Precision Strikes, and level 65 I chose to go with Power Variation. Of course if you want more DPS you can go with Power Manipulation. I wanted the extra heal because this is all about surviving so that's why I stuck with that. Now as you can tell with this build you are going to lose out on a couple of things because you're not going full 61 into Reaver and the most important thing that you're missing out on is you are going to lose your viral stream which is a very big burst ability also an overall DPS increase but unfortunately we had to sacrifice that in order to go high enough in the paladin tree to get touch of life and get our full heal. Now this is all about surviving, so yes, we will lose out on some of our DPS, some of our burst, but in exchange we will be able to heal ourselves, we'll have a, a huge heal, with a, which is the full heal, and also we're going to have several uh, utility abilities such as our, an additional stun, we're going to have a shield that is going to allow us to have higher resistance, uh, also higher armor, a lot of different things that's going to be picked up from the paladin tree that's going to be very useful for us. 
The alternate build that I ended up coming up with that I will also have in the description below this video is not as much into Reaver, but a little bit more into Paladin. And the reason why we're picking that up is because we can go all the way up to get Shield of the Vengeful. And that's going to be a 25% damage increase across the board, which will affect everything that you're doing. So it's a huge ability that you're going to really love, but you're going to lose out on a couple more things from Reaver if you do not go as many points into it, such as Pestilence, which isn't really a loss because you're already getting a 25 damage increase from Shield of the Vengeful. So it makes up for losing Pestilence. And also it's going to be an increase to everything else you're doing. But you're also going to lose out on Flesh Rot. Now Flesh Rot is a very good dot and you're not going to have it anymore with that alternate build. So it's highly up to you whether you want to go that route or not. All right, let's go into the buffs here. We got Binding of Affliction. Pestilence, Plague Bringer, Shield of the Hero, and Void, and of course any Guild or Planar buffs that you want to run. Alright, let's go into our macros here. Now, our main builder here is basically just three abilities. It's Shadow of Dread, Infestation, and Ravaging Strike. I went ahead and threw in all my planar abilities as well, but if you do not have them, make sure that you don't have them in the macro like I have them. And also in the description below, I'll have all the macros down there for you to copy and paste. I'll leave out all the planar abilities and uh, make it very basic for you guys. All right, so the second macro that we have is basically our heal. It's going to cast Lights Bomb at ourselves. Now it's going to be your spammable small heal, so it's going to be very important to staying alive. And of course we have Crest of Entropy in there as well. And our third and final macro here is going to cast our power variation at ourselves, which is going to be a huge heal that is going to be very important to our survival. All right, on our bar down here, we have our builder macro. We have dire blow, which is going to be our finisher. We have our heal macro. We have our full heal button, which is going to be touch of life. We have a dot macro for whenever our shadow of dread isn't up. We have Shadow Warp, which is going to teleport us forward 15 meters and also remove all crowd control effects, which is going to be basically our second break free. We have Cloak of Death, which allows us to slip away and go into stealth whenever we get in trouble, even in the middle of combat. All right, then we have our Power Variation Macro, which is going to heal us up a lot of health. All right, then we have our Break Free on a separate button because you do not want it in your macros, people, unless you do not want to do well in PvP. Then we have Spasm here, which is our Interrupt, and it's also going to stun our opponents. All right, then we have Lights Hammer, which also is a stun from the Paladin Tree that's going to be very important. All right, let's go into how to play this build now, and it's going to be very straightforward because... We are losing out on a couple of key abilities that Reavers normally use, but yet it's not going to be that bad on us because we're basically having to give up a little bit of our damage in order to pick up healing. And if you're anything like me, you get focused a lot, and it's even worse when you're a Reaver because you're causing the enemy so much problems by applying your dots to them. It's debuffing them, it's damaging them, it's spreading to everybody. They absolutely despise Reavers, so they're usually going to try to bring you down if they're any kind of good PvP or and know what they're doing. They're going to try to bring down the Reaver. Now, if they're targeting you, you need to have an ability to survive or some way, somehow, or have a friend healing you or something. Now, this build here is made to not have to rely on anybody else. You're going to have so much healing going on that you're going to be able to survive most situations. Now, one of the things that I need to point out is this ability right here called Soul Feast. And it's going to make your soul sickness, necrotic wounds, and flesh rot heal you for 8% of the damage done by their damage over time effects. So that's going to be huge in that you're healing up from your dots. And also, our big heals here, such as the spammable small heal, touch of life, and power variation are going to be healing us for a lot. So let's go ahead and go into how to play it. It's going to be basically builder finisher. As soon as you get enough combo points up, you can go into your finisher. And as you see, I have K alerts displaying all the dots taken off like at the feet of my character there. And that way I know when they need to be reapplied. 
So we're going to go ahead and reapply them there since they're getting low. And we have three combo points, so we're going to go ahead and hit our finisher. Now that's basically our damages right there. It's going to be all builder, finisher, builder, finisher. And because Reaver is just so powerful, even without Viral Stream, you're still going to kill everybody. It is insane how good Reaver is right now. And we're going to go ahead and show you how to heal with this build now. Let's say we're doing our damaging abilities, but now we start taking damage. So we've got our opponent dotted up. And we want to go ahead and run behind something. Try to line aside the enemy and start hitting your heal macro, which is going to be a spammable small heal. Now, you can't really see how much it's healing me because, of course, the dummy isn't hitting me back. But you get the idea. All right, so if you start to get really low in health, you, of course, got a full heal, which is touch of life. So that's going to heal you for a tremendous amount of damage there and get you right back to where you need to be to applying all those dots all over again all right so if you get in even more trouble you of course can hit your planar variation macro which is going to heal you a lot more again so this is going to be insane the where you're damaging everybody you're killing everybody and anytime they try to kill you they are going to be having the worst time of their lives trying to bring you down and even if you get swarmed by enemies you, of course, can stun them, or if they're casting at you, you, of course, can interrupt stun them with your spasm. Uh, you can, of course, if they start chasing you and you see a lot of people chasing you and they stun you or something, you can hit your port forward and run because it's going to remove all crowd control effects from you. Now, if things still are getting bad, you, of course, can hit your break free and then go straight into stealth. And that's going to apply the stealth to you for, I believe, six seconds. So you have a little bit of time to try to get away there or run behind something so that they don't know where you're at. Now that's basically the build. It is very straightforward and very efficient. And it's going to kill a lot of people. It's going to make you survive. And it's going to take a lot of pressure off your shoulders because normally whenever you're playing a DPS build, you're trying to get in and out. Even if you're at range, you're having to run away and just beg for a heal. This time, you're not going to have to beg. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And as usual, guys, my name is Grim, and I will see you next time.